Question of the Week from the Naked Scientists. Hello and welcome to Question of the Week. I'm James Titko. Today's question comes in from one of our listeners. Hi, this is Alan from Ottawa, Canada. We know that many animals use the magnetic fields of the planet for navigation, some for short distances and some for long migratory flights. We also know that the magnetic poles are constantly moving. My question is this, how does the movement of the magnetic poles affect the navigation for these animals? Thank you very much. Thanks, Alan. Animals use the Earth's magnetic field as a point of reference to traverse long distances, often for the purposes of migration. While this is well established, the sensory modalities by which they're able to do this is still under investigation. The best supported ideas include the presence of a tiny compass needle of magnetic iron oxide in the beaks of some birds, or there's the radical pair hypothesis, which explains magnetoreception with quantum mechanics. But the ultimate proof is still lacking. However animals sense the Earth's magnetic field, how do they actually use it to navigate, in the case of some birds, to breeding grounds thousands of miles away with centimetre precision? Miriam Liedvogel is director of the Institute of Avian Research in Germany. You can think of the Earth's magnetic field as a giant bar magnet. So there is a North Pole and a South Pole, and the intensity is highest at the poles. And then it gradually decreases towards the equator. And another feature that the Earth's magnetic field, because it's spheric orientation, also provides is a difference in the inclination angle. So the angle of this vector, how it enters the Earth's surface, changes. So it's perpendicular at the poles, and it is almost horizontal to the Earth's surface at the magnetic e equator. So for birds, we know the inclination is the feature they are using. So they don't care about polarity, actually. Due to turbulence in the flow of molten metal in the Earth's core, which generates the magnetic field, it can be susceptible to changes in intensity. Magnetic poles can wander, for example. The North Pole has moved from Canada to near Siberia over the past century. So how do migratory animals react to this turbulence? Yeah, so it's a good question, and we don't know exactly how uh, they do it, but we know that they can cope with fluctuation. I mean, there's daily fluctuation in intensity, also probably inclination. Like, it's not a static entity. It's also not so that they exclusively rely on magnetic cues. So for the migratory journeys, for example, if it's a night migratory bird, the magnetic field is an extremely reliable cue. It's ubiquitously present. You can sense it. But night migrants also use star patterns or the rotational center of the sky or the starry sky. I mean, some other animals use the Milky Ways or any other sort of celestial cues to orient as well, and they integrate this information into a very robust navigation program. So if one cue is absent or gives funny signals that doesn't really make sense for what the animal knows it should do, then it can also just say, OK, well, I rely or I prioritize some other cue. Animals really are master navigators, orienting themselves using the sun, the stars, other cues besides the multiple modalities of magnetoreception, potentially also working in tandem, as we've described today. Thanks to Miriam Liedvogel, Director of the Institute of Avian Research in Germany, and to you, Alan, for the wonderful question. Next time, another animal inquiry will be answering this one from listener Kiran. Although animals, especially dogs, cats, and some birds like parrots, can speak or understand the English language, how are they still able to follow human instructions so effectively? Thank you, Naked Scientists. Bye. If you think you know the answer, why not log on to our forum and have your say? It's nakedscientists.com slash forum. And be sure to drop us a line if you have a question of your own. It's chris at thenakedscientists.com. Until next time, from me, James Titko, thanks for listening and goodbye. Question of the Week is part of the Naked Scientists podcast. Look us up online at nakedscientists.com.